All right. Today, our lecture is going to take a look at Chapter 2, which if I could get you to turn in your textbook over to page WD58 and 59, it's all about creating a research paper with references and sources. And the example of the paper that we're going to take a look at in Chapter 2 is an MLA style paper. Um, our MLA style is going to have a 12 point Times New Roman font. Uh, we're going to double space our text. We're going to have one inch margins. Uh, we're going to indent our paragraphs a half inch. We'll set up a header. Um, this document is going to have some citations, some paragraph citations, as well as a footnote. And then we'll set up a works cited page. And then I want to show you how to uh, take a look at your word count and do a screenshot. And then we'll take a little bit of time and look at some editing features that might come in handy for you. So the first thing I need you guys to do is take a look at your Blackboard, and I need you to go over to My Assignments. And scroll down until you find Word 2. Instead of you typing the paper, I have typed most of the text for you, and I'm going to just illustrate how to insert that text. There's going to be three files I need you to save to your desktop or if you want to save them to your flash drive. We're looking for the files called Safe 1, Safe 2, and Safe 3. But eventually, you'll probably want to just go ahead and open all of these and save these. You're going to need these for homework as well. So a quick way to save is you can just right click on the document and you can save link as, and I've already got mine saved. I'm just going to save it to the desktop so I know right, right where it is and I can get to it quick. So save all of those and then you'll have the files that you need. And we're going to go to Word, and we're going to start a blank document. And so take a second, save those three files, and then join me in Word. So as you take a look in your textbook, on page 59 is a little illustration of what our three-page paper is going to look like. We have two pages of text and then a works cited page. So we are going to, first thing, set up a header. A header is going to consist of the student's last name and your page number in the upper right hand corner of each page of our document. Headers print in the top half inch of a sheet of paper. So we're going to go up to insert and we're going to go over to header and footer, that group. If you take a look at it. Headers print at the top, footers would print at the bottom, and sometimes a uh, paper um, you may need to set up for an instructor might consist of a footer. We're going to choose a blank one. Notice there are several different styles of headers here. There's tons to set up and, and choose, but for the MLA, we're just going to choose blank. It looks like this. I'm going to hit Control R just to right align that, and I'm going to type in my last name followed by a space, and then I'm going to use a tool up on my ribbon. Notice since we're in header and footer, a new uh, tab pops up on your ribbon called Design. And we're going to go over to page number and choose current position and a plain number. Current position, plain number. So there's lots of different ways to number your pages in different styles and formats, but you'll want a blank header and then page number and current position is going to work for you here. Now, by default, it's going to try to make this be Calibri 11. And remember, our MLA style paper needs to be Times New Roman. 12. So we'll adjust that. Now when you're done with the header, uh, you'll close out of the header and you can close out of it on that design tab. You can close here. Or if you just double click somewhere below the header, that'll let you close out of it also. So I am now ready for my heading. And the heading consists of four lines. It's on the far left of your paper. It's going to be your name, your instructor's name, the class that you're typing your paper for, and the date. Well, I want to show you a shortcut that they illustrate in this chapter. Um, we type our name in tons of documents, and a quick shortcut, uh, we're going to show you how to add your name to autocorrect. So I have already put my name in autocorrect. I'm just going to type my initials and hit the space bar, and my name's going to pop up. So we're going to show you how to do the same thing. So join me on file. And you're going to go down to a little tool on the left called Options. 
And again on the left, take a look at proofing. And up at the top, you have a little tool called auto correct options. And that's where we're going to go. Now, in the middle of your screen, it's going to be ready for you to type replace. So I'm going to just type in my initials. And you'll notice my name is already here. And then type in the with area your name as you wish it to appear in your documents. So you'll have to watch this. If your initials spell out a common word, maybe you want to use three initials. And then you'll want to add it. And then you can OK out of it. So mine's already here, so I'm going to hit replace and click OK. And we'll OK it. And then we'll have you test it. You can type your um, initials followed by the space bar or enter. Now add one more for me. We're going to have you type in NCMC, and you'll add that to autocorrect. So again, see if you can do it. File, options, proofing. Autocorrect. We'll add it. And then, okay. and then it's always test it to make sure it's doing what you want. It looks good. Okay, so we were just kind of practicing and playing with that. Now back to our header. The header is at the top half inch of your sheet of paper, and we're now in the heading. So that's something that sometimes students get gets they get confused with that this is the only part that's in the header the heading is only on page one so i'm going to type in my instructor's name i'm typing this for my english 104 class and i'm going to insert the date so you can type the date in or if you wanted to go up to insert there's a tool that's called date and time and sometimes your instructor might want a different format. You can pick a certain format that you would like here. If you want your paper to always be updated, let's say you start your paper today and you don't finish it today and you're going to work on it tomorrow and you want that date to change, check mark that update automatically. If you don't want it to change, then make sure you turn that off. If you wanted to pick a certain format and that to always be the format that you use, notice you have a little default tool over here at the side. So that looks good. The only thing I'm seeing wrong is it didn't hang on to my Times New Roman 12. So the header, you're going to have to set up Times New Roman 12 for, and now the body of our paper, we're going to have to do the same thing. So we're going to go up to Times New Roman 12 point. Now, this is called normal font or a normal style. If you take a look at your styles over here on the right, there's a little tool called normal. And normal is usually Calibri 11. So if you wanted to edit that, if you wanted to modify it, you can right click that and choose modify. And I could make it be times in your room in 12. My spacing in my paper is always going to be double space. So we could look at spacing also. And we could go down to format and paragraph. And spacing is right down here at the bottom. We're going to set it for double. And then make sure your before and after is set for zero. By default, that's set up for eight point, but you want the before and after spacing to be zero. And we'll OK that. And let's OK here. So that's going to give me double space throughout my paper. Another place that you can set your spacing is up in the paragraph group. And spacing is right here. We would want to set it for double. And again, it tries to sometimes give you extra spaces between paragraphs. So make sure um, that none of those say remove. If I hit line spacing options, it takes me back over to where we were just a second ago. So we just set up Times New Roman 12 and double spacing. And then let's enter. And let's center our title. Our title is safely using headphones and earbuds. Control E is the shortcut to center, or if you want to use your little center tool up on your paragraph group. Let's type our title in. And we'll hit enter. And it's still trying to center, so I'm going to hit Control L to go left. Now, as we mentioned, the paragraphs are all indented a half inch. I can set my um, 
indent the ruler or up in paragraph. And I'm going to show you both of those. Let's go up to paragraph to start with. And in the paragraph group, we were just here. We were looking at spacing. So let's go down to line spacing options. And you have a little area here called indentation. And you have two options here under special. A first line indent, would it indent the first line of each paragraph? So that's what we're going for. The other option is a hanging indent, and we're actually going to use that on our Works Cited page. So we'll play with both of those a little bit. And we'll click OK. Now, if you don't have the ruler open, I would like you to go up to View and turn on your ruler. And your first line indent can be set directly on the ruler. It's this top little arrow or triangle on the ruler. So you can move that over here if you wanted to. And then the hanging indent is the bottom little triangle or arrow. And if you double click on that, it takes you right back over here where we were just a second ago. So by default, it should be indented a half inch for you. So if you guys could type the first sentence for me and then the rest of the paper I have pretty much typed for you. So we're gonna type in, people often listen to sound from their computers or mobile devices through headphones or earbuds. All right, now the rest of that I have typed for you and you have already saved that file on your desktop. So we're going to save the paper we've got so far and then we're gonna to add to it. So let's take just a second and we'll go up to file. What is it as? And you know, where are you saving it to? Are you saving it to your flash drive? Or are you saving it to your desktop? I'm just gonna save it to my desktop real quick. And give it a name so you'll remember later. This is called safety using headphones. I'll put my name on it and save. So I've got my paper saved and now I'm going to insert text here. So I could go to the text that I've already had typed and copy and paste it, which is fine. That's what a lot of students will do. Easy, no problem. I want to show you another little tool that maybe you wouldn't use. So it might be a new little feature for you. We'll go up to insert and we're going to go over to the text group kind of over on the right and choose object and we're going to grab text from a file and now i'm going to go out to my desktop and i am looking for my file called safe one safe and the number one and that's going to insert my text for me at the right location it's a few less steps than copy paste now it's going to bring over that text for me and i'm going to backspace and get by the word volume and then space. So as you're writing papers, normally you don't come up with all the text in the paper on your own. Um, you read and take a look at lots of other sources to help you get your material for your paper. And so we are at the point that we need to uh, document who's been helping us with our paper. So if I can get you to flip over in your textbook, we're going to take a look at page 80. So WD 80 and 81. And the cool thing that we're going to show you how to do here is we're going to stick in our internal citations and we're going to type our references as we go. And that is going to build the Works Cited page for us automatically, which is kind of cool. Instead of you having to type out that Works Cited page like we used to have to, uh, and I know we can copy in and paste text to and maybe you use EasyBib. There's lots of little apps and features that are out there. Um, but they want to show you how you can use this references tool in Word, which is very beneficial. So we're going to go up to the references tab. We're doing an MLA style paper. So make sure you check out style. Make sure that is set for MLA style. And we're going to go to insert citation and you are ready to add your first source. And it's going to ask you what type of source this is. Uh, so you can get the drop down here. And this is when we're going to look at in your textbook. And on page 80, they tell us that this is an article in a periodical. So when you choose the type of source, it kind of adjusts all these fields at the bottom. And it tries to give you all the source information that you need for that type. If the right field is not there, 
there's a little option here called show bibliography field. If you turn that on, that's going to expand and give you a lot more field options. And you know, just like always, just sometimes you're not going to have a page number, sometimes not an author. You just fill in as much of the information that you possibly can. So we're going to type in the author's name and we're going to type in the author's last name, comma, followed by their first, <coughs> excuse me, first name. And then their middle name. Well, sorry, you're going to be my glasses on so I can see. And then if you hit tab, that will move you down from field to field. So these little boxes on your screen are called fields. We have quite a bit of information that we're recording here. Um, for pages, they're doing an in period PAG if you don't have page numbers. And then the medium is web. How are you getting it? Um, is it print or is it web? So we'll click OK. If you ever accidentally get out of that um, window and you need to get back in, if you hit enter accidentally, you can always choose give a right click and you can edit source. And that takes you right back over to your um, edit source area, your fields, and you can continue typing. Also, you can go up to manage sources and it's going to show you any source that you've ever typed in here. Um, you can get back in it by just choosing edit and get right back in it that way too. And then over here, when you select source manager, it's going to give you a look of what this would look like in MLA previews and if you're setting it up correctly or not. And then always punctuate after the citation. And then we'll space and we'll flip back over and we're going to take a look. We are ready for our next block of text. Let's take a second and just save. Make sure we got it saved. In. And we're going to insert our next block of text and it's called safe to. So just to review that, I went up to insert. And I went over to object, text from a file, find save to wherever you had saved it. Mine's just on my desktop and insert. And if you'd rather copy paste that, that's fine. Now be careful when you start copying and pasting and adding text, it just messed up my first line indent. So I'll make sure that continues over. I'm gonna carry that over a half inch. So that takes us down to the word technology and we are ready for our first footnote. So to illustrate the footnote, we are going to go up to the references tab again, because a footnote is a reference and footnotes have their own group up on the ribbon. And sometimes your instructor might want a footnote or an endnote and endnote is also inside the footnote area. So sometimes students have trouble finding that. A footnote is just going to print at the foot or bottom of the page and endnote would print at the end of the entire document. So I'm going to choose insert footnote. That automatically numbers the footnote for you, puts the little superscript one up in the paper, takes us down to the bottom of the page, and we're going to have you type in that footnote. So take a second, type that as I'm typing it.
So we're borrowing this from someone else also. So the 75 to 78 at the end, that is a citation. So we want to give credit. So we are going to go up again to our references tab. We're going to go to insert citation. Notice our first citation is here. If I use that same reference again later in the paper, I don't have to retype it. I can just click on it and we'll insert um, the two in my paper again. But I'm going to add a new source this time. And just like last time, we need to flip over and take a look at page 88. And we're going to fill in as much of this info about this source as we possibly can. We want to give credit here. <clears throat> So this happens to be a book. So if you look on page 87, let me sorry, 87. And this is a two author um, book. So when you enter those, you kind of have to separate those with a semicolon, which is sometimes something that students forget. So there's a, a new old tool over here that you can look at. You can click on edit and you can type in the author's names. So this time I want to type in the last name of Gupta and then my first name is Alina. And then if I want to add a second author, I'll click add and same idea. I'll put in Pedro Adelbert. Luis, and then OK. And it separates those two with a semicolon there. And then we'll go ahead and um, continue and fill in a title. And the year. And again, if the fields aren't here that you need, you can just click on that show all bibliography fields. This is Orlando, and it's Palm Press. And the medium this time is print. And you can click with your mouse or tab to move from field to field. And we'll click OK. Now take a look at this. It's going to give me the author's names, which is exactly what I wanted up in my first example. Um, but here in this example, the textbook is showing page numbers. So I have already given the author's credit right here. I have mentioned their names already. So I don't have to mention their name again here in my internal citation. So I am going to get the drop down on my citation and choose edit citation. And they want us to show page numbers instead. So this is something that you'll have to kind of play with a little bit and you'll have to look and see, okay, should I be using authors, names, I already mentioned those. Um, if so, I'll need to add page numbers. And then if you suppress the author's name, I go ahead and just suppress everything because we just want page numbers here. And then again, punctuate on the outside of that footnote. Now, for your footnote, it needs to be set up in a certain style. If you flip back over and take a look at page 59, this footnote should be Times New Roman, 12 point, double spaced, and a first line indent. And we would want that on all of our footnotes. And I know you can highlight it and make all of those adjustments. Um, but they're going to show us how to modify a style. So in this example, I want to show you by just right clicking on your footnote, we're going to go to style. And you are going to set up a brand new style. And I would like you to name your style your last name. So I'm going to type mine and call it Cotton's MLA footnote. And we are going to make it Times New Roman 12 point. So make sure it's Times New Roman 12. And then in the lower left hand corner, let's go to format and let's go to paragraph. And we're going to make it double spaced with a first line indent. So we have been at this uh, window before, changed our spacing and our indent earlier. So we have made all the adjustments that we need. I need you to add this to the style gallery. We want to automatically update it and we want to save this button so we can use it again later. So it's going to save this style and then from now on anytime you have an style paper and you want a footnote you can just click on your footnote style. So I'm going to choose apply 
it changes it. Check that out. Now I want you to go to home and you should see your style button up in styles. You should have your own little button up here. So it's easy for you to add styles. And then earlier we looked at how you can modify those. Um, there are several styles here and you can create a style right here too. So that is a little bit on style. Okay, let's go back up in the paper. So click out of the footnote, make sure you're not in the footnote. Get back up in our paper and we are ready to insert our next block of text. So I'm going to enter and go to that next paragraph and then I'm going to go to insert object text from my file and grab safe. And that's your last block of text. That should finish up page one. And it takes us over a little bit to page two. Notice as we're going over to page two, Word automatically did that for us. That is called a soft page break. There was no more room on page one. Word did it for me automatically. I didn't do anything special. That's a soft page break. In a few minutes, we're going to need to make a hard page break. So there's a couple different types of page breaks that we're going to show you. Uh, notice your header. It should come over. It should print your last name and the page number. It should be changing to for you automatically. If it did not, chances are you probably typed a one in and make sure you need to use that page numbering tool so it does that for you automatically. All right, we need to backspace and we're going to be by the word volume and we are ready to add our last reference here. Our reference info is over on page 93. So if you want to flip over and take a look here. They illustrate in the book, uh, we're going to call out references and we're going to go insert citation. And we're going to add a new source. If you did not have the source information in front of you right now, you could tag it. You could call this the author here is Chamberlain. And you're going to have to put a number by it. So if you want to put Chamberlain 1, uh, you could tag that and OK it. I already have that stuck in there. Let me call it Chamberlain 2. OK it. And then I could come back later on when I have my book in front of me or I have my website pulled up and I know all the information that I need, then I can edit it. So we have everything in front of us right now. So I'm just going to choose Edit Source. But you can use that little tag feature like that. And sometimes for your research papers, they want you to tag paragraphs and you might put a paragraph number there. So this happens to be a website. So there's a website. We'll need to scroll down here, grab website, get our author. So you can use the tag or you cannot. It kind of depends if you've got the material in front of you that you need right then. You may not need to tag it. So we'll fill in all this info and this will be our last and final citation. I'm going to hit show bibliography field so I can get down to my production company. And then be careful on the dates. Um, you have dates that it was written and when you access it. So if you don't have, if we're using a website specifically, you know, websites can change date to date. So uh, you want to make sure that you record for your paper. When I wrote my paper, um, I used the information that was there from 2017. And then it was September 16th. That's over on the next page. And it was medium as web. So a little bit of that is over on top of page 94. And we'll OK it. And I'm going to say yes. And then punctuate. All right. And then we're going to have you type the last paragraph. So take a second and let's type that last paragraph.
A red wavy line is a spelling issue. A green wavy line is going to be grammar. All right, let's take a second and let's save it. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. All right, we are ready to insert a hard page break. So I'm going to be at the bottom of my document and I'm going to hit control and enter and that will take me to page three. Another way for a hard page break is just to go up to insert and you have a tool called page break over to the far left and you can add a page break here. Some other little tools here. This MLA style paper does not need a cover page, but some documents you may need a title page. So cover page is there and if you wanted a blank page um, in the middle of your document, that's another tool there. So. Control enter will give you a hard page break. Now the cool thing is we do not have to type out a works side page. Word is gonna make that for us automatically. I would like you to go up to your ruler and let's drag that first line indent back over to the left. Remember this um, page has a different kind of indent on it. So we're gonna get rid of that right now. And we're just gonna center our title, which is called works cited in this example. Sometimes your instructor might want it to be called bibliography or sources, references, a variety of things. So this example is just called Works Cited. I'm going to hit Control L to go back left. And then we're going to go to the References tab. And we're going to go to Bibliography and get the drop down Bibliography. And we're going to scroll to the bottom of our list here. And there's a little tool called Insert Bibliography. And voila, it should bring over all three sources for you automatically. They should be set up as a hanging indent. They should be alphabetized for you and they should be double spaced. So that is how easy it is to insert the work cited page. If you have used the references tool and inserted all of those citations as we've been going. So kind of the pain and suffering for typing that info in as you go along is so it will make this work cited page for you automatically. Okay, a couple little features I wanna show you. The first feature is a word count and screenshot. So when you write your paper, we're going to take a look at a few features, but one is the word count. If you have to write a paper that's so many words, your word count is over in the left hand corner of your screen. If you click on that, that's going to pop up in the middle of your screen for you. So our word count is the window here, and we are going to take a picture of this. I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can do this. One way, you can just go to your keyboard, and everybody's computer is a little bit different. I know on campus we have just a, a button called print screen. On my laptop that I'm looking at right now, mine is a function print screen. So I'm going to hit that keystroke and then close out of my word count and then just paste. Um, control V is the shortcut to paste, or you can use your little paste tool here and we'll paste it. And that took a picture of my entire screen and I can paste it here. So if you are unsure of your keystroke, just do a Google search for it, type in the type of computer that you've got and Google it. If you ask me, I'm not gonna know what it is. We, I just have to do a Google search for you too. Um, but if you don't have a print screen, sometimes it's control print screen. This example, mine was function print screen or another way. So let's show you another feature. Open up that word count again. And I would like you to go to your start button and you should have a little snipping tool. And if you don't have a snipping tool right here, search for it. It might be under your accessory. So you can just type in snipping tool. So if you click on snipping tool, I love the snipping tool. I use it for lots of things. Uh, I can snip. 
I can snip and just take, take like a picture of part of my screen. So I'm going to grab my snipping tool and I'm going to just draw it around my window here. And when you take a picture of that, you have some other features in the snipping tool you can highlight. So if I wanted to highlight my word count, I could. And if your word count is not identical to mine, that's okay. I could have skipped some things as I was typing here and there. And you have a pen and you can change the color of things. And let's just write your name up here at the top. Let's put your first initial and maybe your last name. So this is a snippet and we're going to take a picture of this and paste it in our paper. So if you have trouble with your print screen, you should be able to use this little feature. Okay. So if you go to edit and copy it, we're going to copy this page. We're going to close out of it. I'm going to say no. I'm going to close out of here. And I'm going to paste this. Not that we need both ways, but I just wanted to illustrate both of those to you. And again, V is the shortcut to paste. And if you wanted to size those, make them fit on a page, you could do that. So a couple ways to get a screenshot and a word count. The word count tool is also, besides down here in the left-hand corner, it is up on your review tab. Word count is sitting right here for you too. All right, couple more things. When you write a paper, doggone it, it is usually not perfect the first time and you need to, of course, run your spell check and grammar check and you probably want to take a look at your wording a little bit. So I'm going to hit control home and go to the top of my document and I'm going to show you a few little features. Um, on the home tab, there's a little feature called find. Let's open find and find will open up the navigation pane on the left side of your screen. And I would like you to find the word people. So I'm going to type in the word people here and it finds four results in my paper. I probably don't want to have the word people in there four times. I might want to use synonyms, take a look at the thesaurus and change my wording up just a little bit. So I want to illustrate that to you right now. So the word is highlighted. I'm going to right click it and just go to synonyms and pick a different word for people. And then I can keep searching in my paper. You see your little arrows right here. You can search down. It will go to the next occurrence. And I could right click, go to synonyms if you want. And the thesaurus is here. If you don't see a word that you like uh, in synonyms, you could open up your thesaurus and it is over here to the side. So if I want to change this, if I want to insert the word society here, I'm going to get the drop down and insert. So a couple different ways that you can um, change your wording up just a little bit. And again, that is the navigation pane and thesaurus. And the thesaurus is also on the review tab over here at the side. If you use that feature a lot, you write papers a lot, Shift F7 is the little shortcut for that. Okay, one more little editing feature. There's a little tool called Replace. So let's go Control Home again, go to the top of our document, and hit Replace. Once in a while, you might know the exact word that you want to change to. Um, I have used the find and replace option before. I have spelled somebody's name wrong in an entire paper before. So I knew I wanted to find the misspelled word here and then replace it with the correct spelling here. And you can replace one thing at a time or if you wanted to quickly replace all of those, you can. In this example, I'm going to have you look for the word person. And my instructor suggested that I change that to the word individual. So I know what I want to change it to here. That's when you might use the replace feature. I'm going to hit find next. It's going to find it for me. And then I can replace it. I'm just going to find the next occurrence. And I probably don't want to change them all up. Change your wording up just a little bit. So that is an example of find and then find and replace. So I believe that will get you through chapter two. Uh, I guess one more feature. When you're editing, let's page two. When you're editing, you might use copy and paste. Um, control click is a quick way to select an entire sentence. If I wanted to move this to the end of the previous paragraph, I can drag it 
and drop it. That's an editing feature. Or you can cut and paste like normal. So you can take one word at a time or a whole line at a time or an entire paragraph at a time. So a little bit on selecting text and editing. So control click will move an entire sentence for you. It selects the entire thing and then you can move. So that will get you through chapter two of Word. And as you take a look at your assignments at the end of the chapter, you're going to take a look at one, which is a research paper. The files that you need are saved for you on Blackboard under assignments, just like we looked at. And then lab two, same idea. You'll need to save those files before you get started. So you'll practice by setting up two of those documents at the end of chapter two. They start on page WD116. So good luck. Uh, email me or give me a call. Stop by if you have questions or need help. Good luck with chapter two.